But now you are familiar with the multi-junction concept. So far, however, we have only focused on monolithic integrated devices or two terminal devices where multiple layers are deposited on top of each other. It is also possible to mechanically connect multiple junctions. This results in devices which has more than two terminals. In this video, we will discuss the four terminal mechanical stacked multi-junction devices. First, we will treat the various configurations of four terminal devices. We will review the electrical interconnection of the two terminal device and compare it to that of a four terminal device. We will then look at the difference in the layer stack. These differences give rise to some advantages and new challenges in four terminal devices with respect to monolithic integrated devices. Let's start with the various configurations. In this figure, we see the monolithic integrated two terminal de tandem device. This is a four term terminal stacked configuration. It can be seen that the four terminal device needs an electrical insulator between the top and bottom cell to operate. This is in contrast with the monolithic two terminal devices which require conductive tunnel recombination junctions between the different cells. If the cells in a four terminal device are not electrically insulated, the electrons generated in the bottom cell can recombine with the holes of the top cell, which is detrimental to the working mechanisms of the device. In addition, the four terminal device requires two terminals for the top cell and two terminals for the bottom cell. There are two ways of connecting the individual process top and bottom cell via wafer bonding or by mechanical stacking. The wafer bonding technique results in two terminal device, while the mechanical stacking results in a four terminal device. Another way of realizing a four terminal device is by using an optical filter. This filter redirects part of the spectrum to one cell and the other part to another cell. This technique is not the four terminal technology of interest. Therefore, in this video, we will focus on the mechanically stacked four terminal tandem devices. We have used this equivalent circuit diagram before to explain the interconnection in a multi junction device. I photon represents the photo generated current, and ID symbolizes the dark current. Every junction can be represented by this equivalent circuit. As we have seen earlier, the monolithic tandem cells are connected in series. Therefore, the voltages of the individual cells add up. However, these cells can also be mechanically stacked. To allow the subcells to be electrically interconnected, DC-DC converters at the back of the solar cells are required. These DC-DC converters convert the maximum power point voltage to one general nominal voltage, VDC, and the corresponding DC current for subcell 1 and 2. In such a four terminal configuration, the currents after the DC-DC conversion can be added up in a parallel connected configuration. One of the major advantages of a four terminal device is that the top and bottom cell are separated from each other. Therefore, there are no constraints regarding lattice matching. This in turn results in increased possibilities of top and bottom cell material combinations. Furthermore, there is no trade-off between choosing the optimal theoretical band gap and lattice matching as we have discussed in the video regarding the 3-5 monolithic multijunction devices. The individual cells in a four terminal multijunction device can therefore be produced separately with their own optimized conditions. This means that the production and optimization process of the individual cells are not limited by each other. The individual cells can be mechanically combined after fabrication. Let us review the layer structure of a two terminal 3-5 multijunction device and the layer structure of a four terminal tandem structure in more detail. Since the individual cells are separated in the four terminal device, there are no tunnel recombination junctions and buffer layers present. 
These layers that are present in the two terminal device can potentially lower the voltage of the device and increase the parasitic absorption. On the other hand, the four terminal device requires some additional layers with respect to the monolithic multijunction device. First of all, an electrical insulating layer should be added. These layers can consist of a combination of different materials. For example, a combination of glass and adhesives or an encapsulation layer can be used. The most important property of this layer is that it's electrically insulating and optically transparent to minimize parasitic absorption. The reflective properties of the layer should also be considered. Another additional layer in the device are the contacts on the bottom side of the top cell and on the top side of the bottom cell. These layers can also cause undesired absorption and reflection and should therefore be chosen carefully. Another important advantage of the four terminal approach can be illustrated by this familiar figure. This figure shows the current of a two terminal multijunction multi device is limited by the subcell with the lowest current. Current matching is therefore very important for these devices. However, in a four terminal device, each cell can operate at its own maximum power point because each cell has its own terminals. Consequently, there is no need for current matching in a four terminal tandem device. As a result, a four terminal is better able to deal with variations in the solar spectrum which can potentially lead to an increased efficiency yield of over time of up to 15%. However, this comes at the cost of the need for an extra junction box and electrical conversion components for the two extra terminals. The question remains whether the increased energy yield can make up for the extra balance of system costs. In summary, we discussed important differences between the two terminal and the four terminal devices. The four terminal device, the cells are connected individually to the power electronics. Therefore, the total power is added up of the two individual cells. This is a consequence of the extra two terminals. Due to this separation, the individual cells can operate at their own maximum power points we discussed multiple differences in the device structure. Important is that the top and bottom cell are electrically insulated with respect to each other. Therefore, lattice matching is no longer a design consideration. This opens the way for variety of new material combinations, which we will discuss in the next sec section.